Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Thursday the 13th of July. I'm glad to see you here. Um, today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, what it feels like to be safe. And so I am recording this from my safe place. This is my the chair that um, was really dude's chair. Um, it was a chair and a half that Rob purchased for, for me so I could curl up in the chair and read and dude could join me and dude managed to make sure that he took up most of the chair and I got to join him once in a while but now it's just my chair um, and this is where I, I kick back and I read while Rob watches his food network and I have dude behind me and a chair a table beside me where I can put my cup of tea and my books um, but it's generally the place I feel the safest it's feel where I feel comfortable I can curl up I can wrap myself in my grandpa's quilt and I can drink a cup of tea and just and just feel safe. It's also a place where I pray quite often. So for me, it's a safe place. And the reason I wanted to talk to you today about safe places is because of some conversations I've been having on through the comments and some conversations I've been having in life and um, people I'm meeting. And then um, something that happened a couple of days ago um, where someone reached out to me that I haven't been able to speak to for several years and discovered that their life has changed completely and I don't know how I, I have a hunch and um, I'm wondering if they wonder if I'm a safe person if I'm a safe place so it just got me thinking about maybe we need to talk about what is safe everybody's definition of safe is going to be different safe for some people may be you know clipping on your your seat belt um, making sure that you always turn your oven off or your stove off before you leave the house for other people, safe may be a little bit more personal, like a safe place is where they know they're not going to be yelled at, that no one is going to strike them, where they know that they are, they can protect themselves. For some people, you know, they see people, they walk into a restaurant, they'll take a chair in the corner with their back to the corner so that no one can come up behind them. They can't be surprised by anybody. And that comes from a real place. Maybe they've had a bad bad situation. Maybe they're former military and they're just used to making sure that they can keep an eye on everything around them. They keep their perimeter clear. Everybody has that sense of what makes them feel safe. For some people, hopefully for lots of people, safe is easy. You know, they never really think about it. But for some people, feeling safe is it's a more difficult thing. It's something they have to think about a bit more. And part of I th part of one of the things I think about as as a Christian, as a priest, and as a member of a church, is is are our spaces are 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 we safe? Do people feel safe when they come into our places? And I don't just mean like you know where are the fire exits and um, if something happened, would they be able to get out? That's always important. But do people physically and emotionally and spiritually feel like? They walk into my churches and think, yeah, okay, this is a safe place to be. It has a feeling where, you know, I feel like I'm going to be warm and I'm going to be welcomed warmly and I can be myself and I don't have to worry about stuff. I think, I don't know whether it's the politics in the past several years, whether it's, you know, the whole, you know, climate change and the climate crisis or what it is, but I'm wondering if our younger generations feel safe. I remember when I was in about grade eight. So I'm thinking 83, 1983, 19, yeah, 1983, 82, 83, 84. And I remember being terrified of the Cold War. I spent a lot of time worried about what happens if, if Russia blows, you know, decides to, to push the button. What happens if the, pri the president, you know, opens up that, that, you know, the nuclear football and, pushes the boat that breaks the code and breaks those clips and puts the code in and you know just hits the new button and we're all done uh maybe that's normal i mean last last week margie asked a question about when were the good old days we could probably also ask the question when were the unsafe old days when was that time in your life if you've had one when you didn't feel safe and for me that was that sort of grade seven eight grade nine era like that time when it just really felt like the world was unsafe and then things like the Berlin Wall falling, the fall of communism, um, the rise of Gorbachev in, 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 out of Moscow in the, in the Soviet Union and the, the falling down of the Soviet, the Soviet bloc, things like that. It felt like 
things were opening up. So we went from feeling like things were really, really d dire to things felt really quite good. And now they're coming back, I think, for a lot of people, a lot of young people especially, who maybe didn't live through the whole, you know, practice for, practice for a bomb by hiding under your desk. Like, that's going to help. But, I mean, we've had a whole groups of, whole generations of kids who haven't had to do that. But now they've been worried with, like, after 2001, they've been worried about 9-11 and terrorism. And they've been told to worry about these groups of people and that group of people. And now we're seeing to the south of us. And, and sometimes I'm noticing up here, too, the, the demonization, if that's a word, of people who are different. We're making spaces that are really unsafe for other people. Sometimes it's just really bad jokes and poor taste. Sometimes it's actual homophobia or, or transphobia, if that's also a word. You know, you know what I mean, I think. Um, but we're, we're, we've, we, it seems like we're entering into a time in society where everything feels dire again. The climate crisis and the, poli the political landscape and environment um, in the Western world, not just in the United States and Canada, but in the Western world. The unrest, that sense of ennui, that like, oh, like I don't know, things are not good. And I'm wondering, where do people feel safe? And do people feel safe in churches? I had a great conversation. Um, we've had this conversation many times about the role of the church and how, how some denominations have become really synonymous with, and it's not true, but for some people... Their thinking is that, you know, one denomination in particular is known for pedophilia. It's like all of the denominations we're discovering have had human beings who make horrible, horrible decisions and mistakes that make people feel unsafe. It's not just one group or another. It's across the board. Um, we just tend to hear about it from one particular church more than others. Um, so churches, are they a place that make people feel safe? And how do we, as Christians... How do we make churches feel safe? There are lots and lots of people who see my caller and for whatever reason, they assume safe. I have had more conversations about big, big like life and death and, and hellfire and salvation conversations with people when I've been at the local grocery store and forgotten that I was wearing my collar. And because I think people see this and they think, oh, okay, this is a safe person. I can talk to her. Usually it starts with, are you a priest? How can you be a priest? And then we talk about what it is to be Anglican. And then it opens the door and we have this like outpouring of stuff, you know, and we have these really great conversations. That's awesome. But for a whole lot of people, this is a symbol of unsafe. This is a symbol of that's what happened to me or that's what happened that that, that hurt me. Not that I hurt them, but someone, someone, some priest wearing this, one of these, hurt them or hurt their parent or grandparent. The, the, you know, the residential schools here in, in Canada, um, the, the amount of child abuse and the abuses that have happened at the hands of people in authority. Um, for some people, that makes this very unsafe. So the question becomes, how do we reclaim that? How do we, people who have some kind of authority, whether we want to argue about that or not, is a different topic for a different day, but for those of us who are in authority within the church, and hence in some ways in society, because there are places and lots of places that still sort of lean over and say, or say you're the priest, can you help out with this? Or you have some kind of moral wisdom to share, that still does happen. How can we reclaim the appropriate authority that comes with this, the one that reminds people that we are of Christ, that we do not hurt, we do not maim, we do not abuse. We actually are here to help to heal people and to help people feel closer to God. There are lots of people who say, well, the best way to do it is continue to wear this. And I agree, I wear my collar. But there are times when I don't wear my collar. There are times when I take my collar off pop it in my pocket. See, it's in my pocket. I undo the button and sit back and have a coffee. Because sometimes that's what it takes to help people feel safe. 
the church has done a lot of good in the world. But there's a lot of people out there. There are a lot of people out there who look at the church and they don't see the good. They see the bad. They see the ugly. They see the horror, the abuses. They see things that they don't even know about, but they've heard about. And because they've heard about it on online or some authority person, or if they've watched somebody who wears one of those or could, if that was their denominational um, dress code, get up there and talk as if they knew what they were talking about and they're talking out of their hat, that they don't know what they're talking about or what they're talking about, what they're spewing is hate. We need to make places safe. And if that means that sometimes I have to take off my collar so I look more like a person, and that that person knows that they can just relax with me because, as I said yesterday, talking about integrity, that that's Rachel the priest, but she's also Rachel the person, Rachel the friend, Rachel the person I can talk to. That we figure out ways to be ourselves and to make safe places for others. I've had conversations lately with people who have been concerned about their own sexuality or their own gender identity, or people who are are concerned because their grandchildren are asking questions like that and they're terrified of what the answers might be. And you know what? It's okay to be terrified. It's okay to not like something. But what we have to do for those of us who are the ones who are facing that and hearing the questions and trying to provide some answers, we need to be a place. We need to be people who have integrity in when we say we're going to make this a safe place. It can be a safe place for someone who's angry and thinks that all of this stuff is hooey and it's against God. It can be a safe place without us having to say that we're going to hate other people because we disagree with them. It can be a safe place to say you're questioning and you're wondering and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You're a child of God. It can be a safe place for people to come and say, I know that my body looks like a, a girl, but I'm really a boy. Okay. Awesome. Do you love who you are inside? If you do, let's work from there. Let's make this a safe place for you to be who you are. We need to make places safe for people. We all know what it's like to feel safe, safe from a storm, safe from being yelled at, safe from fears. But we also have to recognize that we have, we have whole generations of people out there who don't feel safe, whether it's from the climate crises or the worries about economics or not only your own home or not even being able to afford rent, right down to the very essence of who am I as a person? Am I really what I look to be? Or am I something else inside of me? And who is the real me? To, I may look this way, but I, but I believe that I, I'm attracted to someone who looks the same as I do. It's okay. Regardless of whether we agree with that or not, we can still make places safe for people to ask questions, for people to discover their truth, for people to have the conversations that are hard to have. But we have to lay down our own prejudices and we have to lay down our own fears and we have to lay down our worries about what is somebody else going to say and just sit in the moment with, with people who are with us and just make where we are a safe place. Even if that means we take off the thing that gives us comfort and tuck it in our pocket, because maybe what gave us comfort gives discomfort to the other. Because quite often, the most important thing is the other. And just in case you're wondering, what about you? Recognize that when someone else is talking to you, you are the other. There is time and a place and people who want to help you feel safe, just as you want to help others feel safe. So how can you make your environment, your workplace, your home, your space, you, how can they make yourself a safe person and create a safe environment? And how then can you share that with other people that they'll know that around you, they will be safe? I don't think we're called to do anything less, regardless of what our religious beliefs are or are not. Simple humanity tells us that we should treat each other in safe ways. 
have a great day. God bless you. And I'll see you again tomorrow for a Feel Good Friday on Church at Home with Rachel.